Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. We're starting John chapter number 10. You're not going to want to miss miss this over the next few days as we walk through one of those beautiful passages of Scripture that talks about Jesus in light of a reference that we love to make about him. So grab the Word of God, a good cup of coffee, or if you're listening on the podcast and in the road, grab the steering wheel and keep on driving because we don't want you to have an accident this morning. But we are in John chapter number 10. Before we even start with verse 1, let me give you a little background here. You know, the healing of the blind man that we've been looking at in John chapter 9 probably occurred soon after that feast of tabernacles, shelters, booths, depending on the translation you're reading from in October of that year. So the next time reference is not until the 22nd verse of this chapter we're about to read, where the scene changes to yet another Jewish festival, one that you might not be aware of. And we'll talk about that later, but uh, not today. And so as we look at this time change, we know that sometime between October and January is when this particular um I guess you could say, wonderful little scripture lesson takes place as Jesus begins to refer to himself as a shepherd, something that folks will immediately, from Jewish culture, relate to not only the life that is around them, because there were shepherds and sheep pens everywhere, but the Old Testament scriptures, where we all have used Psalm 23, as I did in a funeral just yesterday, we, we hear those great words, the Lord is my shepherd. So in verse number one, let's listen to the words of Jesus. He says, truly, I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. And Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Well, he's going to work on that a little more later, but let's just think about in these first six verses what Jesus is trying to tell us. He's trying to tell us that there is a good shepherd, and guess what? It's me. It's the Messiah. Look look to me, and you will find the leadership you need. You know, an Oriental sheepfold, M.O. Owens writes, was a low-walled enclosure to which shepherds brought their flocks in the evening, leaving them in the care of the doorkeeper. Now, several flocks might share the same same sheepfold, and when the shepherds returned in the morning, they would come to the door to get the sheep they had placed in the fold. Now, thieves and robbers obviously wouldn't come to the door. They'd climb over the wall. But Jesus was probably referring to different kind of folks here as thieves and robbers. Who could he be referencing? Well, possibly those false messiahs who are trying to get the sheep to follow them. Uh, Perhaps these were the ones who had come in their own names to deceive the Jews. Or he may have been thinking of the Pharisees. That's who he's been dealing with here in these previous chapters. The Pharisees, whose lack of interest in the people's spiritual welfare had been apparent in their treatment of the blind man. But it's generally agreed that the fold represents Israel. The doorkeeper may represent John the Baptist, who introduced Jesus to Israel, but the emphasis is not on the doorkeeper. It's on Jesus' right to claim his sheep and on his ability to recognize them individually and to lead them out to pasture. His finding the blind man and bringing him into the light of faith is an excellent illustration of calling out one of his sheep. An oriental shepherd does not drive his sheep ahead of him. He leads them. He doesn't make them go to where he himself has not been. If the sheep have to pass along dangerous cliffs or through a dark gorge, the shepherd goes first to make sure the path is clear and that no wild beasts are lurking nearby. No disaster or sorrow can confront a Christian that Christ, our shepherd, has not met first. He may lead us through difficult places, but we can be sure 
He will bring us out safely. Shepherd's already been there, hasn't he? The sheep follow their own shepherd because they recognize his voice. They're not going to follow a stranger. And that's why it's always important for us to recognize in anything that's going on, and especially when there are those who seem to be trying to convince you to go off into strange areas of belief and practice, not just other religions, but sometimes offshoots of Christianity that seem to be a little odd and a little cult-like. It may be because they are. Recognize the voice of Jesus against that of the false teachers and false messiahs that would lead you astray. How do you know the difference? When you study Jesus and his life and you learn about him, the more you learn about Jesus, the more you love Jesus, the more you get to know Jesus, the easier it is for you to recognize the voice of an imposter. So let's keep waking up in the word every day as we study the Lord Jesus and as he gives his life into us through his word and his Holy Spirit, we'll not only be able to recognize him, but as we follow, we'll find our way safely through the challenges of life. Well, God bless you. Thanks for spending a little time with me this morning. Let's do this again tomorrow and wake up in the word. We normally do a biblical perspective on Saturdays in which we look at some of the events of of the past week in the world. There are so many, I'm really not sure which of these we're going to focus on or if we focus on several, but we'll do that tomorrow. But we're going to just keep going through this Gospel of John as well because we don't want to slow down on getting these applications into our heart. Thank you for joining me. Share it with a friend and let's keep waking up in God's Word each and every day and let our shepherd, our great shepherd, lead us. God bless you.